Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we'll work with imagery from sensors on board a series of satellites called the Landsat satellites. And this is an example of a Landsat scene. It's basically about 185 kilometers in width. So here's the Alaska Range, and then um, here's Fairbanks, the Tanana River, Big Delta is about in this area here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll map burn pixels from a fire that occurred near Big Delta. So this is the fire, and here's uh, the Tanana River, here's the Delta River. And this was called the Mississippi Fire, and it burned in the summer of 2013. So here's an image of the spectral reflectance in the near-infrared spectral region. And you can see there is a dramatic decrease in near-infrared spectral reflectance as the canopy was consumed by fire. And here's the same area in the shortwave infrared spectral region. And you can see that in this spectral region, there was an increase in spectral reflectance in the shortwave infrared spectral region. So basically, we're going to use an index called the normalized burn ratio, which is a function of the near-infrared and the shortwave infrared spectral region to come up with an index of basically burn pixels. So we'll take the normalized burn ratio before the fire. So this is the normalized burn ratio just before the fire occurred. Actually, some of it is already occurring down in this location down low. And then we'll take the normalized burn ratio from the 15th of September towards the end of the fire. And then we'll have something like this. And then if we subtract the pre-fire normalized burn ratio minus the post-fire normalized burn ratio, we'll have an index of burn pixels that will look something like that. And then what we'll do is classify those different normalized burn ratio index values into burn pixels versus unburned pixels. So when we're all done, we'll have a raster such as this. And this is the fire perimeter as supplied by the Alaska Fire Service. Okay, our next application will be using historic Landsat thematic mapper imagery from 1986 and 2009. And both images will be from early July in the Arctic. And what we're going to look at is the expansion of shrub pixels in the Arctic associated with climate warming. So, for example, here's an area from July 6, 1986 as a color infrared image. And then if we look at the same area from the 5th of July, 2009, you can see this dramatic increase in shrub pixels along these riparian areas. So here once again is 1986 and here is 2009. So what we're going to do is look at an area within 10 kilometers of the Hall Road and then basically map the change in NDVI from 1986 to 2009 within this buffer along the Hall Road in Arctic, Alaska. So here's the buffer along the Hall Road. We sort of have the foothills, which is dominated by shrub tundra, going into areas that are dominated by sedge tundra. And then basically what we're going to do is compute the NDVI in 1986, the NDVI in 2009, and subtract the two. So that would give us this raster representing areas that have increased or decreased in NDVI. And the areas that have shrubs that have expanded will have a really strong increase in NDVI. Okay, our next application will be mapping aspen forest stands that were defoliated in 1986 by an insect called the large aspen tortrix. So here's an example from the Landsat scene in 1986. These are all south-facing slopes dominated by aspen forest. And you can see they've been defoliated by the tone on this color infrared image. If we look in 1995, all those aspen stands have recovered and are now in full canopy. So what we want to do is basically come up with pixels that were defoliated in 1986 using unsupervised classification 
and then pixels in 1995 that were broadly forest pixels. So if we go to 1995, here are the broadly forest pixels. And then if we subtract the two, we would come up with all the pixels that were defoliated Aspen in 1986. So that would give us these pixels here. And then what we'll do is we'll convert the large patches of defoliated Aspen forest from 1986 into polygons. So then we'll have something like that. So these are all areas that were in 1986 were defoliated Aspen forest, and yet in 1995 they were covered fully to healthy Aspen canopy. Okay, in our last application, we'll use the thermal infrared sensor data from Landsat 8 to map radiant temperature. So this is the Alaska Range, and then the Richardson Highway and the Trans-Alaska Pipeline cut through the Alaska Range in this valley here. And if we look at band 10 radiant temperature, here is an image of band 10 radiant temperature in degrees Celsius. So what we want to do is assess what is the accuracy of that estimate of radiant temperature in degrees Celsius. So what we'll do is we'll select from the shortwave infrared Landsat sensor raster wet pixels. So here's the shortwave infrared spectral region from Landsat 8 sensor. And you can see wet snow is basically a very dark color because water is absorbing in that spectral region. So what we'll do is we'll isolate all those wet snow pixels using a threshold. And then for all those wet snow pixels, the question is, what is the radiant temperature in degrees Celsius? And we would expect the radiant temperature to be about zero degrees Celsius for wet snow pixels. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you that will lead you to the next video session.